Hello there and welcome back to the new video. So firstly, I'm really sorry for not putting out videos for almost three weeks now as I was not feeling well. But yeah, now we are back and we'll be releasing back to back videos for all the papers that I've read in these three weeks. So yeah, with that said, let's start off with today's paper. So the paper is titled as Improving Unsupervised Dialogue Topic Segmentation with Utterance Pair Coherence Scoring. This is from researchers from University of British Columbia. So at very high level, the paper introduces a problem that looks something like this, where you have a dialogue text. Think of this as a transcript from some Google Meet or Zoom meeting, or probably any kind of conversation from chatbot, conversational data, or any kind of conversation where you have multiple people involved, and each of them have their multiple turns. So in this paper, the authors are talking about just two people, which is A and B, and each of them are making multiple turns as you proceed down in the timeline. So the idea is, can we have a model that takes in this dialogue text and segments this as per the timeline into different topics that are being talked about? So for example, all the things that are marked in red are talking about topic one, where you're kind of inquiring about the entire insurance process. Then let's say topic five and topic six are talking about some different theme. And finally, seven and eight talk about maybe the procedure of submitting some documents with respect to the insurance. So yeah, this could be any kind of conversation as I have already mentioned. So think of A as you and B as one of the customer support. And you're in a conversation with one of the insurance companies and you want to get clarity in terms of various schemes, what are the documents required and all of that. So this illustration to what we just saw is kind of bifurcating what all themes have been talked about in a particular session. So this is particularly useful for the company in terms of analyzing what are the most top themes and further analyzing on let's say sentiment of a particular topic you'll get if there are any promotional offers going on if they were being talked about and what's the sentiment around that in the customer space and so on and so forth so yeah, it's a pretty useful problem in that sense so in this paper authors extend existing unsupervised techniques for doing this topic classification in dialogues where they first mention as in the popular unsupervised approaches only exploit surface level features in assessing the topical coherence among the utterance. Where in this paper they address this limitation and firstly propose a simple yet effective strategy to generate a training corpus automatically of utterance pair coherence scoring. Wherein let's say you'll have utterance U1, utterance U2 and a score let's say 0.9 which would say U1 and U2 are coherent to each other which intuitively should be let's say turn one and turn two should be highly coherent compared to turn one and turn seven because of the distance between those two so that could be the hypothesis so using something similar they generate this training data but we'll further go deep into the exact method as you proceed forward in the paper and once all of this data is generated they train a bird based neural utterance pair coherence model that would take in these two utterance and predict a score between zero and one saying whether these two sentences have high coherence or not as in what's the coherence score in that scalar range so yeah that's the idea of the paper and then they tested and evaluated their data set on three public data sets across english and chinese so yeah with that quick introduction let's delve into the paper and see the data preparation method so let's say if we call coherence scoring model as cs then it would take two utterances at a time which is let's say u1 and u2 and return a coherence score between those two pairs so with this they formalized and stated two hypotheses which is if the coherence score between two adjacent sentences within a same session k the coherence score in such scenarios should be greater than the coherence score between two sentences from the same session but not the adjacent ones so as we can see right j is defined like it should not be either the prior sentence to i or the i or the next sentence to i so that way we are removing the window of adjacency and any other utterance that's not adjacent should have a lower coherence score compared to the sentence that has exist adjacent to the concerned sentence so that's assumption number one assumption number two they stated was that the coherence score between two utterances ui and uj from the same session should be greater than any two utterances that you pick from different session let's say k and m so so this way if you see right if you traverse in the zigzag fashion this is the first 
preference that we are giving which has the highest score this is the second this or this essentially means the same thing so this is the second one that should come in that decreasing order and then this is the third one so there is a rank that's already associated in how do you want to train a model that kind of implicitly learns this importance okay so for this they define the ranking loss which looks like this so this is what you want to minimize and take this value towards zero on average across all the number of samples that you have so if we just focus on this term where eta is called the margin we can think of this as the confidence interval ci negative is the coherence score between the negative samples which again we saw right if you sample first sentence and let's say fifth sentence this is treated as a negative sample because this will have essentially a low coherence score compared to if you sample first and second sentence so this was one of the assumptions and the second one which the author made and we saw which was like if you sample from the same session of let's say one and five that should have high coherence score compared to if you sample one and let's say second sentence and but that's not from the same session it's let's say from superscript one session then this is the order that you want to maintain so here ci negative is like one five and one two superscript one kind of thing then negative of ci plus which is a coherence score between the positive sample or one two or one five kind of a scenario so if you understand this intuitively so if ci plus is greater than ci minus which means the things that are positive are close enough have a less distance or have high coherence value compared to things that are really far away or have low coherence value if this is happening then this parameter which is ci minus minus of ci plus becomes negative and also for simplicity let's consider this difference to be like really really high so this will be like a really high negative value so now if you add a margin of let's say some quantifiable number still let's say this comes as negative so now your equation becomes max of zero comma something negative which will give you a zero as your loss and this is exactly what we want right or other way around if you see if now ci negative is really really large than ci positive what does it mean it means that the coherence score between farther sentences is high rather very high compared to coherence score between sentences that are nearby so in that case what will happen is ci negative minus of ci positive will be a positive value eta plus something positive will be a positive value then max of zero comma something positive will be a positive value but since the nature of loss function is to push it towards zero then eventually over iterations this behavior is supposed to get flipped and instead what we saw which was the first case is what the model should learn which will essentially lead to the loss towards zero so i guess you understood now so that's the main intuition behind the triplet loss and why does it apply to this problem okay so now talking about how do you get these ci values essentially so for that as we have already discussed they use BERT model like you have your utterance one you have your utterance two you append prepend and also insert the cls tokens and separator tokens all of that gets concatenated into one big string further gets tokenized into subword units you have your token embeddings position embedding saying what's the relative position of each token and also the segment embeddings where segment tells you whether this belongs to utterance one or utterance two then all of this goes through your BERT model then you extract the embedding with respect to CLS token on the output end pass it through a multilayer perceptron and you calculate the score so here again authors make use of the pre-trained BERT model because that was already trained on two tasks one was like NSP and the second one was MLN now if you talk about NSP which is next sentence prediction kind of also holds similar aspects wherein given sentence one and sentence two you want to say if sentence two follows sentence one or not so there is a sort of similarity between these two tasks at a certain level so they directly use this and calculate the score of saying whether utterance two follows utterance one or not so that's your coherence score that you get which you then use and plug it into the loss function which we saw and accordingly all the embeddings get trained in order to minimize the loss okay moving forward
So talking about the entire end-to-end -end flow, you start off by all the utterances, let's say U1 to UK, that are there in your dialogue session. With this, you can carve out K-1 consecutive utterances, for which you then pass them through your BERT model that was fine-tuned on ranking gloss. And eventually, you'll be getting coherence score for each of those pairs, with a score range from 0 to 1. So the authors don't directly use this to derive topic segmentation boundaries. Rather, they convert this into what they call as depth score, which is a one-to-one -one mapping. So C1 goes to DP1, C2 goes to DP2, and let's say CK-1 goes to DPK-1. And the way you would derive DPI is based on this formula. So if we analyze this and see the intuition behind this. So if you see, right, in isolation, a coherence value of, let's say, 0.3, wouldn't make sense because you don't know for your data set if 0.3 is the highest that you can get to. So as to what I understand, the idea of depth score is to take and calculate the importance of a certain coherence score or topical boundary based on relative values in the list of all the coherence values. So for example, let's say you want to calculate the coherence score for three and fourth sentence. So what you do is you take the coherence value that occurs maximum, let's say between one, two and two, three. So let's say 2, 3 was the thing that gave you the coherence value of 0.8 and 1, 2 gave you a value of 0.6. So 2, 3 is what you choose, which is 0.8. And then what is the maximum coherence value that you get on the right side of 3, 4? Let's say 5, 6 was something that gave you a coherence value of 0.9. So now the depth score value for this 3, 4 is nothing but the coherence value that you have for this. Let's say if it's 0.3. Then you subtract this value with the coherence value of the maximum of the left and also the maximum of the right. And you take the average of that difference. So this gives you 0.5 plus 0.6 divided by 2, which is 1.1 by 2, which is 5.5. So now you can imagine, right, the higher the depth score, the more chances of you saying this is the topical boundary. And for that to happen, the lower the coherence score, the more the difference, the more the average. And eventually you're saying the more chances of it being a topical boundary. So yeah, that's the logic. So this formulation would derive graphs that look something like this, wherein wherever you see the peak of depth score, that should be a topical boundary. So now again, they uh, do a threshold based signaling to say if it's actually a topical boundary or not, for which they again rely on mean minus standard deviation kind of formulations. So if the score is less than mean minus standard deviation by two, you say essentially it's a topical boundary so if you consider a Gaussian curve then this is your sigma this is your two sigma of negative and these are for positive so any value that lies in this region is essentially considered as an outlier and in turn a topical boundary so yeah that is the entire idea of the paper and yeah this is the visual representation of what we just saw you have all your utterances you use the same BERT model you derive these depth score for each of these pairs. And as we can see, you have 0.1, then 0.8, then 0.2, then 0.75, then 0.25. So something of that sort is the graph that's derived. And again, based on the new value and the standard deviation by two, what this is the point that came out to be saying this is a topical boundary. Cool. So if you like this paper and the explanation that I did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.